Hey everybody, what up? Welcome to Fake Trucking, Real Talking. I'm Thomas. I'm Dustin. And, and I'm actually here in person. Yeah. For once. Look, dude, shit has not been panning out the way I wanted to. Man, see, now this seems kind of weird that you're sitting next to me not talking to me through my TV. Yeah, and like, now you have to actually put on pants. Yeah, this feels intrusive now. <laughs> my privacy was established. The man from the TV is in my home. I guess to say the words, you get to look at my face when I talk to you. Oh, I ain't. I don't look you in the face when we do it, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> do you look me in the eyes at least? No. Can I stare at the back of your head and just pretend things? This implies that I'm on top, by the way. First thing you do is start smashing the. Well, that's because I was gazing into your long eyes. I have long eyes. <laughs> Sorry, I fucked that up. I wouldn't say I was gazing longingly into your eyes. All right then. Also, imagining what a selfish lover I can be by not giving you a reach around. Alright then. But, depending on how much you talk about, like, dicks turn you off, you probably wouldn't be hard enough to even give a reach around to. You know, I don't know why everybody gets hung up on the dicks thing. It's all the rest of you guys that have an issue with dicks. No, no, like, you just have a thing with guys. I don't care about dicks. You have a thing with dicks guys. Dicks don't matter. It's the dude. Yes. Yes. So... My dick, which is pretty much a part of me. No, no, but I've made it clear. Dicks are like point of view porn, um, where it's ju where the only part of the dude that you see is the dick. Totally fine. Does not bother me at all. But the part where you see a man, <laughs> yeah. and he's making man noises. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Sorry, I've been like doing funny man noises lately. It's been pretty great. What does that mean? Um, well, I have a lady friend now, and every time, like, the word man noises is brought up, I just immediately start grunting. Do so it. So some... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty terrifying. I'm like, man, what if I was having sex with somebody and that's what they did? Um, I do kind of, like, growl after I come during sex. Is it more like a whimper or an actual growl? No, it's more like, it's it's like a kind of guttural growling thing. Can, can we get an example? I can't do it if I'm not in that moment. Alright, we'll jerk off real quick and then like record it in the bathroom one day. Ooh, that can be like a private mini-sode. <laughs> Thomas, it's like the adventures of you, it's a webcam of your face, and you're watching porn, and you're just jacking away, and you're trying not to look at the webcam, but you know it's there, so occasionally you make eye contact with it. <laughs> then you imagine all the people who might be looking at you jerking it. I'm gonna go ahead and say that will never happen. No, no, don't like show your dick, just your face. No. <laughs> just let them see you, your no. facial expressions, and we can hear that. All right, all right. No. Or, or was it more of a? No, I'm not gonna tell you if you get <laughs> if you get it right. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's what it was. You just sit there in bed. <laughs> God, I'd be weirded out by you. You're like, you just blew your load in me. You're laying on me, quivering, going. <laughs> you gotta make that lip mo. You, you gotta have that, the top lip, the little lip just curled out. <laughs> kind of pouty face. That you, that you blowing your load. All right. It's good to be back, ladies and gentlemen. This show is ruined. <laughs> yeah. So how, how have things not been going your way? Um, with trying to sell this damn house. It's just... One person just keeps fucking it up for the rest of us. Somebody's pooping in my pool. See, you stole my thing. That's what I, I did. say. Don't poop I in my stole pool. It. I'm pooping in your pool by saying pooping in my pool. Because, see, I found out the sweet thing that I don't want anybody to say. But it was super sweet. So I had to tell people about it. I was like, hey, man. Here's this Are thing. you still doing the super sweet thing? Yeah. Fuck yeah. But I was like, you can't tell anybody about it. Or else you'll poop in my pool. Yeah, you'll be pooping in my pool. Because it'd be super easy to poop in my no, pool. No, I'm, I'm giving you credit. You came up with pooping in my pool. <laughs> I mean, are you happy? Pooping in my pool. Yeah. That's you. It's alliteration, so it's funny. Yeah. Pooping in my pool. And again, all I can imagine is Scotty just run up to your kiddie pool and going, Bleh. and he runs away. <laughs> and you're like, Scotty, gosh. Every time. Kind of Am Napoleon I like Dynamite a little kid from a 1950s movie? No, you're more like Napoleon Dynamite and just like throwing his arms oh, down. Oh, I'd rather be a kid from a 1950s movie. You can be a kid from a 1950s movie. Fucking, god damn it, man. 
Napoleon Dynamite, not something that deserved as much attention as it got. Say what you will, I laughed my ass off on that fucking dumbass movie. No. There was... I didn't appreciate it for anything beyond, this is so fucking stupid. No, that movie and was I funny. Giggled. No, you want to know... Because there was no writing in it. It was just dumb. But you want to know it was a fucking hilarious movie. It was Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder was fantastic. It's the fucking funniest movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Come on, Lance. Get over here. I'll cup the balls and swallow the gravy. <laughs> Something about Jack Black just screaming, I'll suck your dick if you get me free. Suck your dick. Dude, every fucking part of that movie is hilarious. Down to Robert Downey Jr. playing as a black guy. Dude, that was the best. That was like the best acting I've ever seen. That was impressive. I had, like, if you had not told me that was Robert Downey Jr., would never have guessed it. It still took me a while to figure out that the angry Jewish uh, producer guy was Tom Cruise. But that's just sad. I, I didn't notice! It's just Tom Cruise with a big nose and a bald head. Yeah, but and he was fat and he was like super angry and Jewish and it was fucking great. That was like my favorite character in that whole movie. Diet Coke! They're just screaming that at people. He made the grip punch the director in the face. <laughs> yeah. From a televised webcam from fucking the other end of the world, who's the lead grip? You punch that motherfucker in the face as hard as you can! There's the grip. He knows. He knows that Jewish guy has his job by the balls. Even apologized to him before he did it. Man, you know, I was in a Burger King one time, mm -hmm. and uh, this, uh, I get, I don't know why nerds are not attentive to conversations, like, they don't know when they're boring people. I was in a Burger King, and this dude came in with his girlfriend, and he was doing lines at her from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, just nonstop, nonstop just going through lines. I'm like, dude, shut up. <laughs> Your girlfriend isn't interested. Could you see it on her face? Yeah, when I looked back for like two seconds. But you don't need to look back. Because there's no, there's been no chick in the history of the world that has ever laughed at a 17-year-old kid doing lines from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You never know. There could be that one. No. One. No. I believe there could no. be that one. I'm the vagina whisperer. I can tell you they're you not You are interested. no vagina whisperer. They're not interested. You are no vagina whisperer. How is that? How is that? If you were the vagina whisperer, you'd be swarming in vaginas. Doing okay? And all I can imagine is vaginas swarming around you now. Yeah. Like disembodied vaginas. Not actual women, just vaginas, like bats. Flapping around and maybe saying things like, Feed me, Seymour, as they open up their labias and black hum nom 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 nom. Is this just a show where you'd be really weird? Sorry, I've been having a very overactive imagination lately. Why is that? I, I think it could be because I'm dating somebody who doesn't mind me rambling. Where normally I'm very self-conscious about what I say, I found out that I can have my filter just completely ripped off. Uh-huh. So I've been kind of running with it. Okay. I can't tell if that's a good thing or bad. Should I be more self-conscious? As Thomas opens a beer to deal with me. <laughs> I don't know, man. I ain't you, so I can't say what you should be self-conscious about. Well, how do you feel about this, Thomas? Feel about what? Feel about me randomly saying things or kind of running on whatever tangents I happen to be verbally speaking. I don't know. I don't have in-depth opinions about a thing you just started doing. Good point. Yeah. Stick that in your craw. Where did that expression come from? I don't know. But it's a fun thing to say. Yeah, but I mean, craw... Was craw ever actually uh, synonymous with mouth at any point? It must have been. Because when I hear craw, all I think of is crawfish. Right. And I'm like, it's not a mouthfish. It's just like a little wannabe lobster. <laughs> it's like the lobsters never got to be lobsters. Man, lobsters freak me the fuck out. Like, they're just giant bugs. Yeah. I Most like seafood that. with a hard shell is just a just an underwater critter. Yeah, but something something like crabs kind of makes sense to me. Like they're little dicks, because like how are they little dicks? Because they'll pinch you. Yeah, little fuckers. So will lobsters. But like crabs are kind of like they're kind of funny. They just seem like militant. Like they're militant, but they don't bother me. How how are they militant? 
Cause like they got they got the look like oh man fuck off now I'm gonna walk sideways and I'm gonna watch you while I leave. <laughs> but lobsters trigger cause like and like crabs don't trigger like the. Okay, so like I've had in the span of two days, I had mm-hmm. I saw fucking three camel crickets on my fucking wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you three uh, separate you were times. posting that on your Facebook and freaking the fuck out. Yeah, camel crickets can't do shit to you, mm. but they freak my shit out. Cause they're oh they're dude dude I'm just heads up never go underneath my house uh, it's swarming with camel crickets second there's no lights under my house it's it's a fucking crawl space that's why they're all down Door. there and they are attracted to light flashlights will send them jumping towards you that sounds scary so you're crawling through and you see one it's just kind of looking at you you're like oh that, that's a camel cricket. Whatever. And then another one jumps like right into view with it. There's another one. Then you like expand your flashlight behind them and you see the waiting army that's slowly advancing on your position. I found out they really hate fucking CO2 fire extinguishers. You like blast that in front of you a couple of times and fucking get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> they scatter. You had to you had to fire extinguish your fucking camel crickets out of your way. When it looks like there's well over a hundred of them and they keep jumping at me, yeah. Dustin, I'm never coming over to your house again. <laughs> I had work to do underneath my house. Ugh. It's under the house. It's not like... I, I hate them motherfuckers. Like I'm saying, totally harmless. But just, just look at them, man. Oh, dude. Horseshoe crabs. How do you feel about horseshoe crabs? Um, They kind of skeeve me out, but they're all right. Well, have you, have you ever seen one, like, scuttle up to the beach and then run back into the water? Or have you only, like, seen them in aquariums and pictures? Pretty much only aquariums, I think. First time somebody hooked a horseshoe crab and dragged that son of a bitch on land, scared the fuck out of me. Little kid, and all of a sudden this, this, this thing is scuttling out of the water on more than eight legs, just... <laughs> and it's coming at me. It circles the chair I'm standing and screaming in. Because I'm six years old, and this thing is, like, as big as me, it looks like. From my panicky expression. <laughs> Circles my chair, does a U-turn, comes up past my chair, and then runs back into the ocean. <laughs> it felt like it did it just to freak me the fuck out. Like, you know, when you jump out and scare a little kid, and then you run away again? Yeah. That's what this thing did. <laughs> and then ran away. It was the grumpy old man of the sea. See, crabs the grumpy old man of the sea. Horseshoe crab? No, grumpy normal crabs. Crabs are tasty. Crabs are delicious. Lobster's pretty good, too. You ever had uh, lobster? No, I don't think so. It's not bad. It's a different taste, but I enjoy it. Man, the, one of the... Cam- like, the, the first fucking camel cricket I saw last week... Um, see, I fucked up. I came at, it, came at it with just a cup. What are you going to do? Catch it and throw it outside? Fuck no, I don't throw them outside. <laughs> Fuck no. That gives them a chance to return. No, yeah. If something comes in here, it dies. <laughs> um, but the first one I saw, I came out with only a cup. And that was a... Because, see, there's really no other way you can catch it except with, like, your hands. But uh, I, I came out with... my hands. I came out with just a cup. And that was a mistake. Because then it jumped away. And now it's freaked out. And it jumped into my closet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, fuck. Wait, how are you going to... We're just going to catch it in the cup? Yeah, that's how I get rid of camel crickets. Yeah, what are we going to do with it after you catch it in the cup? You put it in the cup, you shake it all around. Sometimes, when you when you slide it all around on the wall, you rip their legs off, and problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if that doesn't work, then I'll just get something to, to put on the other side. Then I, I, I slide the cup over it, so now I have the camel cricket in there. I shake it around to really freak, to like really freak them out, and then I dump them in the toilet, and I flush them. Hmm. That's how I always do it. Um, and it pretty much works flawlessly, but you have to use a cup and a shoe. So that, like, because you come at them with a shoe, like, because the, they can track things, they'll pretty much only track one thing at a time. Yeah. Like, you just move the shoe so that it's, like, higher priority to him, and then you slap the cup over him. <laughs> I've just never gone to such a great length to catch things. Um. Well, the thing is... They freak my shit out, and like I'm sleeping in there. I don't want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, I don't want, want there to be fucking. You. And it, it, if I if I go after them once and they get away, because like I'm saying, if you come at them with just a cup, you can't get it. Like they're 
very fast. I can imagine you sitting there for the rest of the night if it jumped into your closet waiting for it to come get you. I still want to sleep because like I'm saying, they're harmless. The worst he can do is jump on me. Mm -hmm. But but if you if you try to get them and you miss, now you freaked them out and you'll never see them again. They'll, like, they'll, they'll just keep jumping and eventually they'll get to somewhere where you can't get them. Yeah. So you got to get it right the first time. Um, and like there are a fair amount of camel crickets that come in here. Why do you have so many? I don't know. My well has them and the underside of my house has them. I mean, it's an earthen floor. It's damp. Dude, there was a ball of tape on my floor and I woke up and there was a camel cricket stuck to it. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's only like 0.05% of my apartment that is covered in tape right now and still a camel cricket touched it. <laughs> so now all I can see is just in the middle of the night the place is just swarming with camel crickets. <laughs> because I just randomly put tape somewhere and a camel cricket touched it. They must be touching everything. <laughs> They're coming for you, Thomas. So then I had a dilemma. I was like, well, either now I have to put tape everywhere or I need to put tape nowhere and just <laughs> remain completely ignorant of this problem because having a little bit of tape just freaks my shit out. Try it again. Put down like a little bit of tape. No, see, this is... No, I don't no, want to. If, if you catch another one, then tape everywhere. <laughs> if can't. you don't... You can be like, okay, that was a fluke. But I can't do tape everywhere. Buy a lot of tape. <laughs> Ooh, then cover yourself in tape. Tape's really great at catching bugs. Like, I think there's something about the adhesive they like, too. I doubt it. It's just more like they try to walk over and they're like, oh, no. It'll stop bed bugs, too. It'll stop everything. Oh, dude, you know those like, mouse traps they have? That's the sticky paper? Yeah hate those things like I just imagine how terrifying that would be you walk on the sticky paper and all of a sudden your hands are stuck yeah. but odds are as soon as you get stuck you probably still have that forward momentum so your face goes down into it too and Every, you're like oh everyone, no. that, everyone that uses like the fucking glue traps for mice like has some sort of story well okay maybe not everybody but some people have stories about then tearing them apart mm -hmm. in some way like using a second trap and then like ripping the mouse apart or doing something terrible with it. Wait, like, they caught him and then they just went, ha ha, watch me torture this thing? Yeah. It's kind of cruel. Hey, man, you're already killing it with the fucking... Yeah, but I mean, like, just kill it. Don't be like, ha, I'm going to take this hatchet and, like, chop <laughs> off its tail. Now I'm going to, like, slowly work up to the ears. Or watch me put it in a blender. I don't know. Everything would, like, me killing those camel crickets is probably cruel. Hmm. Fair enough. Like, the paper I hate because people forget about it. Yeah. And then, you know, three months later when you're cleaning your room, wondering what the fuck that smell is, and there's just, like, rotting mouse staring back at you. <laughs> That's really gross. It is. So, wait, wait, wait. You mentioned earlier that you're, like, doing pretty good with the ladies. You want to talk about it? I'm not, I'm not saying, like... Immediately, but like in oh. general in my life, I've been doing pretty good. Oh, I thought like something new had developed. Now I could be like, oh boy, tell me about it. Nothing? Not anything I'm going to talk about right now. Something. There's a thing. My first apartment had a mouse. Like, we're talking like the first couple days of me being in an apartment. I'm going to pretend everything you say is innuendo. First couple days I have my, my first apartment, I heard scratching the wall, and I was like, that's probably not a good thing. Yeah, you did. And then, <laughs> and then I came home one day and I was like, I'm going to play Mass Effect 1. And then I was starting up the menu. I was like, boop, boop. Uh, and then... like Thomas in my, likes the foreplay. Got it. In my peripheral vision, I was like, wait a minute. There's a thing. Like, I'm not looking at it right now, but there's a thing that I don't remember that being there. That shouldn't be there. Dirty girl. And then I looked at it and it was a fucking... It was just a dead mouse. <laughs> just lying on my floor. I was like... Uh. I don't like can't really make too much out of that. So I put it in a Taco Bell cup threw it away. <laughs> it's pretty easy. I was just like, scoop. This is bad. No, I, didn't, I didn't clean the carpet or anything. Like, eh. <laughs> just shrug. Eh. I gotta stop looking at you because like, occasionally I'm gonna wreck. But I'm like, hey, conversation. I'm used to making eye contact. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Like, I just watch TV and I don't, <laughs> I don't look at anybody. I'm used to eye contact. I'm used to, like, connecting. 
Yeah, you want to connect with me? I do. I want to connect with you. In a biblical sense. Hot. Very. It's going to get kind of steamy in here. Man, so my favorite movie of all time, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Mm-hmm. So this guy made um, another movie called, like the guy that directed The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and kind of wrote it. Um, made another movie called Once Upon a Time in the West. Is that a DVD sitting on your counter over there? Yep. And see, because I bought it, because I, I was getting a new mouse, and it was like under 20 bucks, so it wasn't free shipping on Amazon. It was $8 shipping on Amazon. Right. And the next mouse up was like $40. So it's not like I just, I didn't want to buy a $40 mouse. Mm -hmm. And Once Upon a Time in the West, Blu-ray was $9. So I was like, well, I might as well pay the same thing and get Blu-ray. So I did that. And uh, every like, there's a lot of, of, especially Hollywood people, like critics and actors and directors that say Once Upon a Time in the West is a better movie, like that director's best movie. So I watched this movie. Meh. 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 Not that great. I don't understand why the hell everyone likes that movie. Holy shit, Thomas, I didn't pay attention, but you actually have some hardcore 5 o'clock shadow going on. Yeah, I kind of do all the time. No, no, not like this. This is like some new level Thomas right here. Dude, I do that all the time. Dude, I have never seen patchy hair on the back of your chin. No, sorry, the back. Yeah, back I, of your chin. Like I, back here. I like made There's it. patchiness. Yeah, I do that all the time. Like where it's growing in thick. But, and then streaks of it that just aren't growing at all. Yeah, I do that all the time. No, you do not. Yes, I do. Not like this. How often do you see me, Dustin? Not that often. But often enough that know that you don't... Dude, this is not that much. I'll let it get like twice as long as this. I can't wait to see you next week. <laughs> well, I, I probably have shaved by next week. No, don't. Wear it. Show off your ruggedness. But so I was watching this movie. And... The, here's the entire movie. It's some chick, like, married this dude, and you find out later she was a whore, mm -hmm. and this guy bought this plat patch of land where the railroad was going to come through, so he was going to build a town and make a bunch of money. And then there are these two dudes that help her get her town. And the end. And there's a bad guy, but he dies. You just generalize the plot. Yeah, but, like... That was it. Like, there's nothing... There's, like, three hours in that movie, and none of it... I don't... Is really superbly like, profound. There's a part in that movie, like, towards the end, there's this dude that just shows up and keeps playing a harmonica, mm -hmm. and he basically doesn't ever say anything, and he seems to be of questionable morality, because... Like, when he shows... Like, there's a scene where he shows up at this chick's place, and... Uh... He just starts ripping parts of her clothes off. And, like, holding her down and stuff. And he doesn't do anything past that. He is, just... he, is he still playing the harmonica when he does this? Because that'd be kind of <laughs> awesome. No. Uh, and then, like, he, like, saves her life or something later. Like, two minutes later. But I don't really care about, like, you, you still did that part where you're ripping yeah. her clothes. So, but he, he, like, barely says anything. And then... At the end of the movie, he's like, I'm going to peace out now. And then she's like, are you going to come back? And he's like, uh, maybe. And it's like, <laughs> why, how, why are you emotionally attached to this dude? He just showed up and played a harmonica. Like, who cares? I, I can't really ever buy a movie that does that. There's a Clint Eastwood movie where... I mean, I guess it makes this makes more sense, but there was like a 16-year-old girl that falls in love with him. Right. And he keeps having to be like, no, go home. <laughs> You're a 16 year old girl. Uh, Shoo. But Shoo. She, yeah. <laughs> but she's just like madly in love with him. Statutory bad. Shoo. Shoo. There's not really a reason to be because he, he shows up and just says nothing. But 16 year old girls still do that. But this yeah. is like a full adult woman. It's like, why are you. And then there's this dude that is like hanging out, talking to her in her house for like what seems like a couple hours. And then. He leaves with the harmonica dude at the same time, mm -hmm. and then he just falls off his horse. 
So Monica, dude, is like, all right, I'm going to check out why he fell off his horse. And he's just on the ground shaking. And he's like, man, I got shot. And he got shot in, like, what looked like the fucking kidney or something. But, like, recent, Like, suddenly? Or how long He had been you? shot for, like, a full day. And had just been hanging out of this chick's house. <laughs> and there's no sign. He's not giving out any sign that he's shot or anything. He's just, like, shaving and going about normal things during the day. Like, that's dumb. No one would do that. I don't care who you are, chicks. I'm not gonna hide a lethal bullet wound just to talk to you. I'm gonna show up at your place, maybe, but I'm gonna go, hey, I'm shot. This is real bad. <laughs> I'm gonna die. You you got a phone? Y'all got a doc? Get him. They didn't have phones. Well, I figured it was a western. That's why I was like, you got a doc. Yeah. You got a doctor? You got you got one of them not Indian doctors? You know, who uses real medicine instead of pretends he's using medicine by saying the spirits will either save you or damn you? Which is more or less just like, eh, good luck. Vroom. Well, a lot of times, like, actual medicine, even though they didn't know it was actual medicine, but actual medicine would be coupled with religious stuff. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, sometimes they did actually know, but not necessarily the reasons, but they did know that this is good for this. Like when they learned that aloe was good on burns and stuff. Right, but like I'm saying, like, but they didn't see it as a scientific thing. They were like, aloe is good on this stuff for religious reasons. Hmm. Like, this is what, are, like... Are you talking about Indians or just... In general, like, all cultures. There's like, a, there, there is a, a religious state where you go through where it's like... Like, dude, science didn't exist until, like, the last couple hundred years. Yeah, no, I... You know, like, correlating stuff like that just didn't exist. So it's I, like, I think so, there might be some correlation. I mean, if it continually happens... No, it, it's... Aloe is not... It's not that... Like, the religious rites that you say to heal someone are just as intrinsically valuable to healing somebody as the material that you're using. It's the way they saw it. There's got to be, like, some witch doctor somewhere. Like, aren't you going to do the incantation? Nah, it just kind of, like, rubs the plant on you. He fucking knew, but he didn't say anything. Um, this is somewhat interesting. At least really interesting to me, but I don't know how interesting to anybody else. Uh, and come on, dude. There was some crazy scientific shit going back on in ancient China, too. Regardless. It, no. you, you make your point. Go ahead. I mean... What what is, but not like a system of rational thought though. No, like no, it was never it was never a system. It was like maybe one person knew something a little more than other people. Well, see, like okay, I, you know how uh, I think it was Hippocrates that's supposed to be like the father of medicine. Maybe am I getting the Greek name right? I I I could not tell you if you were right or wrong on that. Because that's the guy with the Hippocratic oath. That's why it's named the Hippocratic oath. It's because he's supposed to be, like, the first... So he's responsible for do no harm? Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, I don't know if he specifically is. Maybe they just named it after him and we came up with it. But regardless, he's supposed to be, like, the first guy to do medicine. Uh, but there is a... There is, like, a papyrus from ancient Egypt. Uh, and this is, like ancient to the ancient Egyptians mm. all we had was a uh, all we have is a copy of this text that someone in ancient Egypt copied down and it was so the, the, what they were copying was so old that they had to write down uh, stuff in the margins to explain what it was saying like some, huh. of the, some of the language was so archaic they had to explain what it meant yeah so it makes like a it makes it kind of doubly difficult for us because it's like both of these are incredibly archaic sounding. Or not even incredibly archaic sounding. Well, I was going to say, I mean, we had the Egyptian language down courtesy of the uh, Rosetta Stone, right? Yeah. But like... So from there, it was just translating what the Egyptians were translating well, from Well, but what I'm, what I'm saying is the distinction that that, that more modern ancient Egypt, like that, that newer ancient Egyptian... The distinction he saw between the differences in the language, mm -hmm. we don't really have access to. Like, you can read, 
you can read the literal differences, but as far as having a sense for like what the current language is, we don't have that. You know, we didn't exist in his time. Yeah. But so, this was a medical text, and all the medical texts from when the person doing the copying, all the medical texts generally were incredibly religious things. Like I'm saying, where you have like a religious thing and then a, a thing that happens to be scientifically effective coupled with it. Right. Uh, and a lot of like spells, like a scorpion bites something, so like you suck out the poison of the wound. Yeah. Because they learned that much. But also you need to say a bunch of, you know, words about, oh, some god, save whatever got there. Amun Ra, heal the poison. Yeah. Um, I think, I think this, that spell does call on Ra. But, I think, yeah. But, so, the text that was copied, though, was from, uh, it was a incredibly scientific medical document. It had, like, you would look for symptoms that were going on, mm. and it would say, like, if the patient is exhibiting these characteristics, then this is what is happening to him. Um, and then you apply this treatment, depending on what happened, and then you watch him after the treatment, and then it has more variables of, like, if this happens, then there's another treatment you can do. Or yeah. if this happens, then you pronounce him you Dead. know he's gonna die <laughs> uh, and it sounds very modern of like you know you will look at the symptoms and then you will announce the symptoms and announce your like diagnosis and what you're gonna do it follows our protocols of how we treat uh, illness and disease basically uh, and there's no religious stuff in it and that seems to be the first like rational medical text and <laughs> Uh, it's it was we think it was supposed to have been written by Imhotep I think who was also a uh, great builder right in Egypt like he, he was an incredibly famous person in ancient Egypt he was deified um, like basically they, they thought he was a god uh, like later on so nothing like the mummy portrayed him as Oh, no, that's not Imhotep. That's not... I, like, I don't even think that Imhotep from the mummy existed within the same time period in ancient Egypt. Okay, because that's the only Imhotep yeah, no, I know. Nothing like that. But the Imhotep of ancient Egypt was... Uh, he, he was really famous for basically doing like being a builder and uh, medicine and a, a lot of stuff. So a general awesome guy. We we thought he was just like a myth for a while until mm -hmm. we found uh, contemporary engravings referencing his name, like stuff during his lifetime that was talking about him. So it's like, all right, this guy. But we don't know where his tomb is. Um, is this one of those uh, another hidden tomb buried in the mountains, probably? Yeah, with like we don't know. We don't know where it is. Still love that when you think about it. Pyramid, pyramid is a really bad idea to hide treasure in. Yeah. Behold the 40-story monolith where all the goodies are. I think we were, we were supposed to have found something that might have been Imhotep's tomb. And we found, like, a shit ton of bulls or something. Mm -hmm. Like, mummified bulls, and they were supposed to be important to him, I think. But then we didn't find him. Or anything in the tomb that would talk about him, so I don't know. Right. So all that aside, I, <laughs> I've, I've, I, I do officially have a girlfriend, Thomas. That makes me happy. Yeah, you like to keep talking about that. Well, I just we you, we didn't discuss it before. Then you bitched at me because I didn't discuss it last time. Did I bitch at you because you didn't discuss it last yeah, time? Yeah, you're like what? You could have talked about this. I'm saying you could have talked about something rather than fall asleep. I was so fucking tired that night, dude. <laughs> I was I was in my bed and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get out of here if I fall asleep. Nope, gonna sleep. Well, good job. So what do you want to talk about your girlfriend? I just want you to know that I have one and she makes me very happy. Dude, she cooked me food earlier. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was like a bunch of chopped up veggies and stuff and like it's weight loss food pretty much. She either eats healthy or she's sending me a message. I'm not sure which. Um, what? Do I have to pull over? No. Not say you don't tell me to pull over. Nobody. I don't know that I would look corner. eating healthy and like. I don't know that I would look at it as a message. I say as I knock back another Pepsi next. In your crappy, crappy Doritos. <laughs> that almost killed me earlier. <laughs> Man, Total War Rome 2 comes out tonight. And you're just psyched. Yeah, you, you, this, can't, you can't wait until this podcast shit is over. This is now exposing... Um, <laughs> the exact when's... day this is recorded? Yeah. <laughs> but... You've been linked. This is it. Yeah. Remember what we're saying and you can figure out when we do this shit. But Rome 2... Total War Rome 2 comes out tonight. I am stoked. It's going to be sick. I can see your boner from see, here. See, then I can play as Hannibal, and I can have war elephants, and I can stomp the shit out of some Romans. <laughs> and then the elephants can get scared and come over and stomp at my troops, and I'll be like, God damn it. Wait, is that a thing? The elephants get scared oh, and they just kind of turn around? all the time. Elephants barely worked. Like, he's no, 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 I'm talking about game mechanics. I'm not talking about oh, real life. Oh, I don't know about game mechanics. But no, it was pretty funny. In real life, yes, Hannibal, I would be scared to deal with elephants. Hannibal spent a ton of effort bringing elephants with him across the Alps all mm -hmm. the way into Rome. And God, uh, that sounds like that would be such a pain in the ass. Oh yeah, pain in the ass. Bunch of them died. Bunch of people died along with them. Um, but they they brought elephants with them across the mountains, like from Spain into Roman territory. So wait, they, they got them from Africa, transported yep. to Spain, over the Alps. Yep. Holy fuck. Yep. Uh, and then, because the, the Romans weren't expecting that, they were like, nobody's coming over there. So they just didn't... Yeah, they really didn't put fortify any, anything over there. Yeah, they didn't put any armies over there to, to stop him. So just one day he just comes out of the Alps with a shit ton of dudes and elephants. And, and beasts like, they've never seen before. Yeah, like, have they seen yeah. elephants before, or was this new to them um, still? They would know about elephants. Like, even even the Vikings knew about elephants in their time. No. So, yeah, stuff. The Vikings got around. Well, but I don't think they ever saw an elephant. It's just through trade, you know. Oh, okay. At the very least, they had, um, they had ivory. Mm hmm So they must have known about elephants. Uh... But like, I figure somebody would ask where the fuck this thing came from. The Romans would know about elephants, but in terms of like the individual foot soldiers, they would have never seen elephants. You yeah. See what I'm saying? So yeah, no. when you, like that was kind of the whole effectiveness of war elephants. Is they show up and they scare you, but for goddamn good reason. Well, it didn't really work that well because the elephants would get scared and then just start stomping on everything, <laughs> uh, which would include Carthaginian troops as well as Roman troops. And then later on, the Romans learned if we just make really wide lanes in our lines, the elephants will just charge right through the lanes. They won't trample anybody. And if we get horns and start blasting them at the elephants, they'll run back and stomp <laughs> on their owners. So they spent a lot of Hannibal spent a lot of effort to get those elephants there, and it just fucked him. Not just not that effective. It's got to be kind of crushing to your morale. Yeah. I always thought elephants would be a really awesome idea to have for Battle Beast. I mean, come on, they're they're the biggest land mammal you're See, gonna get. There were I knew there were elephants in Total War Empires, and uh, or Empire. I don't know if it's plural, but I knew there were elephants in there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, dude, I'm gonna make an army with a shit ton of elephants, and it's gonna be sick. Uh, and then I did, and then I got in game, and the elephant riders were like sitting on the elephant's neck. And their feet were almost touching the grass, and I was like, "Oh God, damn it! These are Asian elephants!" <laughs> Fuck! And that's not nearly as impressive. It's just like a big dumb horse. Yeah. They had the little pygmy elephants. Yeah, like it's Me? not. It's not like it's worse than a horse now because now you're <laughs> slow. And you're just on a. You're just on a miniature elephant. This sucks. Uh, 
oh god, I can only think of the actual sheer terror of, like, you're following behind an elephant, only for it to do a 180 and start stampeding through your lines. Or imagine being riding an elephant, and it freaking out. Because sometimes they would freak out and just do shit, like, uh, they'd be on a raft, and they're trying to take the elephant across the water, mm -hmm. uh, and it would freak out on the raft and charge into the water. But an <laughs> elephant can't swim. So imagine being the rider, being like, oh, <laughs> this elephant's going into the water. Jump. No, no, no. That's when you learn to swim. That is when you learn to live. The elephant can drown. You can swim back to the raft and be like, hey, guys, I need another elephant. I don't know, man. If you go into the water with a panicky elephant, I think you might be fucked. Because you're, now you're not only in the water, you probably can't swim, and you got a great big beast freaking out next to you. No, no, no. The water's deep enough, and you can swim. The elephant's going to hit the water and just kind of keep going, and you're going to be like, bloop. <laughs> well, poor elephant. No, the elephant would be as buoyant as you are. I thought you said elephants can't swim. No, they can't swim. Yeah, how, how do you think anything drowns? So it'll swim like a fucking, it'll sink like a fucking rock. No, well, it's not. It won't necessarily swing, but it'll start thrashing and it won't stay, it won't be able to keep its head above water for very long. Right, but it's still buoyant. The point is, it's going to be kept close to you while it's freaking out and drowning. Bullshit, not me. <laughs> I'll be swimming away. Well, it'll be thrashing away and I'll be like 30 feet away going, sorry Dumbo. You know what I find really interesting? I miss you, Jumbo. Afrocentrists who try to say that everything comes from Africa. Oh, uh, yeah, that. Like, people tr trying to say that Hannibal was super, super black. Which, hey, I don't know. Maybe he was. Mm. But it seems unlikely. Because, like, he was from a Mediterranean nation. Even the people in that area now are not black. Right. Why would he be super black? Just kind of doesn't make any sense. And then there are people that try to say the ancient Egyptians were, like, super black. But the ancient Egyptians have stuff. Like, they have depictions of people that are darker than them. So. Kind of thought we were all doing the whole Pangea thing, you know? What do you mean? Supercontinent, Pangea. Right. Yeah, I thought that was, uh... You do realize people didn't exist when Pangea existed. Yeah. But so what does life existed when Pangea existed. But what does Pangea have to do with people? Perhaps origins that made people no things people, that people existed. didn't exist when there was Pangaea. Where did people come from, though? They evolved from mammals. Yes. What mammals? The mammals that existed in the. Is places. it possible those mammals existed on other parts, though? Like throughout, on the different continents. Yeah. When Pangaea separated. I guess. So yeah. Origins begin on Pangaea. Pangaea splits. No, I don't. No, takes I don't, with no, it. I don't think there were there was a mammal distribution when Pangaea was split. So you think humans came from one central location in one continent? I think that's supposed to be Africa. I think we're all supposed to come from Africa. So you believe with the African centralist? People. No, that doesn't mean we're all black. Well, no, not necessarily black, but Afrocentrist is is a term. It's like Euro Eurocentric is. Like the, the the people who who came down to ancient Egypt and they were like, no one could do this except white people, so the ancient Egyptians were white. Huh. It's the same thing. Gotcha. Okay. The cradle of life. I don't know. I really don't know where we came from. And I'm sure shit probably not gonna get the really, answer in my lifetime. The best civilizations come from that Mediterranean area, not from like deep Africa or northern white areas so really, like i would say talking about greece and stuff like that well no not greece greece sucks uh greece was good for like writing and culture but in terms of like a historical like force mm -hmm. greece was not that important greece is kind of sucky maybe the mediterranean is where we all really need to be Rome, awesome. Ancient Egypt, awesome. Yeah. And then there's China. Pretty much those three, I'd say. China had some pretty badass stuff back in the day. Like, I think there was um, something about... You know the terracotta... We were talking about the terracotta warriors before, right? Yep. And each one of them uh, actually had legitimate weapons on them. Like, some of the weapons they had were, like, reals, these weapons, right? Yeah. They found coatings of electrum on the blades of the very edges of all, a lot of the weapons. 
So they had the they had the capability of identifying what Electrum was and how to fashion that to supplement weapons. I don't know what Electrum is. It's it's a type of metal that's it's a superior metal, but I think it's supposed to be really hard to to smith with or use. Yeah. But they managed to um, coat the edges of these blades with a superior type of metal that was just never used again by anyone or discovered or I, I don't know if it was lost or something but nobody else did it and it made a superior weapon maybe they thought it was for decor or what but it made a very fine sharp and durable edge They're, so it was kind of surprising like hey they found a way to harvest a bunch of this seemingly difficult to obtain ore and then had the smiths who were skilled enough to make these, to use these for the weapons, who were then later killed because they saw terracotta warriors. <laughs> uh, you know those, all of those terracotta people mm -hmm. who were supposed to have been uh, painted? Because like when you think of the terracotta army, you just think of... The clay soldiers. Yeah. And they just have a generic <laughs> clay color to them. Yeah. But they were all supposed to have been painted. And I think we, I think there are, there's like a, you can see pictures of an example of a painted terracotta person. Like what they thought a terracotta warrior would look like painted, I or? I think we found some that still had some of their paint on them. Okay, so they weren't painted because they didn't get around to it, they just weren't because they didn't have time, like, that faded. No, this is the thing, they were all, they were all painted. Yeah. It's just, just it went away. Yeah, it's time like, faded that It's shit. like Roman stuff and ancient Egyptian, like we think of the Roman stuff as just stoic white blocks and ancient Egyptian stuff as, you know, imposing tan-colored monoliths. Mm -hmm. But in both cases, they painted things very extravagantly. Like, they were... they were the, it, it seems like every culture had a real colorful, colorful style to them that was completely lost because... Paint, By the time we came around, it fucking faded. Yeah. I don't know, I just really enjoy how stoic we think cultures were simply because the colors that they placed on things is faded. Your base is all that will survive and this is what we'll forever base you off of? See, no. see there's a pun. Not funny. Aw. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for just, you know, dumb But like, go. we have like the Roman columns, columns and they're like imposing and stuff and really it would have been all splashy and colorful and Party time! Vibrant. Yeah, same thing with the Egyptian stuff. Well, you know, you could you could go there one day and fix that. What? You just go there and fix that. Like, any columns you find standing, you can take your finger paints and start, like, doing little doodles on them. Scream, that's what the Romans would have wanted. <laughs> what would Rome want? You know, Greece is just an example of why democracy doesn't work. Why specifically Greece? Because Athens had, like, one of really the only historical examples of a purely democratic system. Or at least one of the only historical examples that lasted very long at all. Right. But, uh... Like, I hear the word democracy never works, but I haven't had anybody give me a good example as of yet. Athens? Again, beyond, uh, beyond just the name, in, please. In Athens, they like it was mandatory voting. Like they would take a rope and uh, basically corral people mm -hmm. to go to the voting area, and they would put something on the rope that would mark your clothes, so that if it became clear that we had to force you to go vote, then you're now you're in trouble. <laughs> um, so they would, have, they would have everybody vote on everything. Like, hey, do we want to send the fleet over here? Do we want to send this army over here? Like, not, not just, hey, we're going to go elect a president and he's going to do shit for four years. Every single thing, we put it to a vote. And Sounds like that would be a giant pain in the ass. Yeah, Athens, like all the rest of the Greek city-states, fucking did not work at all. Because who is the most successful Greek? Um, I probably won't be able to answer that. It was Alexander the Great. And okay. Like, he was really a Macedonian, and 
like the Greeks didn't like him and he wasn't really that Greek. But so this is what I'm saying is he didn't really have anything to do with Greece. Right. Incredibly successful. Actual Greece, a pile of ineffectiveness. Like Sparta. Or any other Greek city-state. I learned something today. Sure. Sorry, I mean, I'm not a big history buff like you are. Yeah. See, well, this is why I like Rome 2 and all these Total War games. Because I'm like, oh, history! Because, <laughs> like, I can play as um, Epirus right. in Rome 2. Because Pyrrhus of Epirus, uh, famous military, like, he was supposed to be a really great general. Mm. Existed uh, during the same time as uh, Hannibal and the Romans that Hannibal fought. I can play as all the famous people, and I have no idea who any of those people are. But I'm I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> That's really all I can do. I can just feed off your energy and be like, "Add a boy, Thomas." Uh, you can have your big doofy, goofy little grin. You'll be like, "Hey." Also, like you know the whole thing about Hannibal, right? I only know what you've really been explaining to me so far. Okay, well, basically, he's not a cannibal. God damn it. Talking about the Hannibal Lecter movies, yes. how they, uh... Because that's what everybody thinks when I say Hannibal. Well, I mean, that's really the first culturally no. relevant name that pops up. No! Hannibal! 2,000 no, you, years ago. You can say no all you want, but I say culturally relevant as in... No! Our culture is what dictates that name. When you say no. Hannibal, and if that is what the majority opinion is, that is the cultural it's relevance. Only because there's cultural ignorance. I, that is a, that is a good reason, but that still doesn't change the fact that that is what is culturally relevant in people's minds when you say Hannibal. But basically, Hannibal was like, "Man, I really that person's gonna eat shit." Oh, oh they, they Hannibal was like, "I really hate Rome. I want to go fuck up Rome." So I got a whole bunch of people went to Spain, went over the Alps, then spent like twenty years fucking up Rome. Yeah, because like he couldn't take. Rome itself, the actual city, mm -hmm. but they couldn't kill him either. Like they couldn't stop his army. And in fact, here's how here's how they learned to beat Hannibal. Uh, and in fact, they, were, they put they put this guy in charge, and he was like, "I'm I know how to beat Hannibal." And here's how you beat Hannibal: Don't fight Hannibal. Just when he comes over, don't fight him. And just when he leaves, start fucking up the shit he leaves behind. Like if he takes the city and then leaves, retake the city. Uh, if he's going to come over, if we know he's going to come over this certain area, burn all the crops down and leave. <laughs> so he can't eat. Uh, just don't fight Hannibal. And so this pissed the Roman people off. They're like, no, nah, you have to go fight Hannibal. So they put some, uh, some other consul in charge, and he went and fought Hannibal, and he got his ass kicked. And they were like, uh, sorry, other guy. We're, uh, we're going to put you in charge again now. And he's like, don't fight Hannibal. <laughs> so that was what they, that's what they learned, is just don't fight Hannibal. Uh... And then eventually they went over to Africa and threatened Carthage, and then the Carthaginian Senate was like, hey, Hannibal, you gotta come home. But, uh... So ba basically, he kept... He was basically undefeated by one of the greatest empires on Earth and kept them terrorized for more than a decade. So, like, officially just fucked shit up. Yeah. Also... He was missing an eye. Really? It was. I think I've heard it was an arrow hit him in the eye. But that's probably unlikely. It, I think he was going through a swamp and he got an infection in it. Mm -hmm. But so he lost an eye. So he probably had an eye patch or something. That's kind of badass looking. So there's just a guy with an eye patch bringing war, war elephants across the mountains. And he's just like, I'm going to go fuck up the greatest empire on earth. Because I want to. Trying to figure out how we buy garages. Don't we have more driver slots, like truck slots, in the garage we have now? We have trucks. We have the trucks assigned, the drivers assigned. Well, this but is I just a man us. this is a management thing for what garages we have. If you want yeah. to go buy a garage, you have to drive to the garage. Yeah, and this is the daily profit. But is that just kind of like a? That, profit to date thing or are we generally that, that may just be averaging how much money you yeah made. that has to be an average and I wish for the love of God I could like scroll in this thing so I can figure out where another garage is south there's one right in that city or is that the garage you have now 
That? Yeah, that's a that's a garage. That's are you sure? Yep. Alright, let's Let's go though. We got two hundred grand. I wanna buy a garage and hire some fucking drivers. I wanna auto manage this fucking job. Uh, I think you would need some trucks first. Yeah, but I mean we gotta have the garage to even get a truck. We have a second truck. Remember how I bought this? Oh wait, no. Yeah, no, I bought this, upgraded it. We don't have a second truck too. That's right, we never had a truck to begin with. This is the first truck. Yeah. Alright. We're gonna get a garage. We're gonna get a second truck. And we're gonna do this shit. Which way is south? I'm heading there. Sweet. Beep beep. Seriously, Thomas, do you just want to like change FTRT to history with Thomas? I mean, it kind of is that a little bit already. I mean, we, we you could just like pick a chapter in history and just rant, and I can sit here and be like, uh huh. No, I don't want to do that. Wow. <laughs> You know, Thomas. No, isn't that badass? Guy went over, f fucked up Rome, and probably had an eye patch, and brought elephants with him. That's a fucking. That's a badass. Does he? Did he have a double horned helmet too? No, nobody had double horned helmets. Okay, did he have a Kaiser helmet? No. Well, he's not as cool as he could be. What the? No. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying. If he had a Kaiser helmet, he could have been a little Also, cooler. the Romans hated his ass. Because he spent so much time fucking up Rome. They yeah, just 20 kept... years kind of fucking leaves yeah. an imprint. They just kept chasing him. I think it was like 16 years, but, you know, good enough. Like, how did he keep getting troops? Uh, Well, that's what one of the things that was... Well, first of all, he was pretty much always outnumbered by the Romans, and he still would whoop their ass. And he... He would like recruit troops from the nat from native people that didn't like Rome, like Celts and stuff. Uh, How much is this garage? Is that one hundred and eighty? I don't know. I don't know where the price is. Bottom right. No, I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, one hundred eighty. Fuck it, I'm doing it. Plus, we can quick travel to garages. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. Now all we need is like three shitty trucks. Three crappy drivers. And we can automate our money. We can win FTRT. Ah, it made a noise. <laughs> Did. Productivity 100%. Oh yeah, I guess that there's only one truck slot for that garage yep. we have. Look at that. Bubba Craig. Bubba Craig. Main talk? What the fuck? Man talks, that's right. We're it's the truck we're equipped with. No, it's yeah, it's man TGX. Yeah. Now all we need is an actual truck. Alright, Dustin. What's up? It's about time. Oh. Well, it's all good. I mean, we just bought, blew all our fucking money on this anyway. So I guess we gotta say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>